we've got about 46, I believe, students here already. And or, um, it, as the others are joining us, um, I've got my colleague Irene at the back end. Um, she's admitting students as they come in, and she'll also help to monitor chat. Um, so I just wanted to thank the teachers for organizing this uh, session with Education Planner BC. My name is Punam. I'm an advisor with Education Planner BC. Um, some of you may have heard of us, but for those of you that have not heard of us, um, we hope today's session is really going to help you to understand the many different resources um, and tools and information that you guys have to plan for post-secondary education um, and to apply to post-secondary institutions in BC. So um, I know students always have many different plans for their future. You guys are in grade 11. Some of you may be thinking of going into post-secondary. Others may want to do other things um, after high school. Um, so today's, fo uh, today's focus will really be on post-secondary education in our province. Uh, for those of you that have questions, you are very welcome to put your questions in the chat. And Irene's going to monitor that and help us to answer that throughout the session. But we're going to try and leave some, um, uh, some time um, during the presentation for interaction and engagement as well. So you guys are grade 12 students, and when you go into post-secondary, you're going to be required to participate and engage and contribute. So I hope that you'll be able to do that through chat. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to learn about Education Planner BC. But just before we go on to watch a quick um, short video, I'm just really curious. Uh, have you guys heard of or used Education Planner BC before? Maybe just indicate in the chat or um, uh, use the reactions button to give a thumbs up if you've used it or heard of it. Um, all right. So it seems like um, majority of the students uh, through the reactions button and chat have used it, but there are also some others that have not. So, okay, that's awesome. Thanks everyone for participating. So for those of you that have used Education Planner or have heard of us, the video may not be new to you. So, um, but I would still appreciate um, if you can follow through. And for those of you that have not heard of us or used our website, I'll play this short intro video for you. Education Planner BC is a centralized online resource that helps explore your post-secondary options in BC and apply to those institutions directly. The planning section offers a ton of valuable resources to help you in your planning process. The search database allows you to explore through thousands of programs offered at the 25 public post-secondary institutions in the province. Narrow down your search using the many filter options available, including filtering by keyword, institution name, and our subject area. Once you're ready to apply, Create an account and you'll be able to apply to multiple institutions in the province. And don't worry, if you have any questions throughout the process, fill out the contact us form in the help section and one of our advisors will get you the answers you need. Remember, educationplannerbc.ca is here to help make it easier to plan for your journey into post-secondary. Good luck! All right, so there you go. For those of you that have not heard of us, I used our website, Education Planner BC, as you saw in the video and heard. We are a centralized online resource. We've got tons of information for students to plan for their post-secondary journey, um, to explore programs offered by many institutions in our province, and to also use our application system to apply for admissions. Now, on this screen, I want to talk to you a little bit about your options after high school. I'm really curious to learn what you guys want to do after high school. So, Maybe you can use the chat and um, let me know what, what, what your plans are after high school. If you want to go into post-secondary or you want to work. I'm just really curious to see what students are planning to do after high school. I do recognize that some of you are probably still exploring. You're still trying to figure out what you want to do. 
Um, and that is totally okay. If you, if you don't know what you want to do, that's totally fine. Um, I'm going to talk to you a, um, a little bit about your options. So um, if you want to share, you're very welcome to put that in chat and let me know what you're thinking. Ooh, seems like majority of the students so far <laughs> um, wants to get into post-secondary. Someone wants to go to Harvard. I really like that. All right, so um, it seems like majority of the students are thinking of going to post-secondary. Someone wants to get a good job. So that's all good. So you guys are going to have tons of options after high school. I think you all know that already. Um, post-secondary is certainly an option for you. So going up to a college, a university, or an institute, some of you may want to get into the workforce. So if you think you're done with schooling for now, um, you wanted to get a job and start earning money. That is an option you've got after high school. Some of you may want to pursue something in the trades. Is there anyone that wants to do something in the trades? If you're interested, maybe you can put that um, on chat, but um, you don't have to if you don't want to. So um, if you're interested in hands-on learning, things like building, fixing, or creating things using tools and technologies, then maybe the trades is something for you to pursue. Some students after high school, they go into post-secondary, or through other upgrading programs and just upgrade their high school marks. Sometimes when students finish grade 12, they realize it's that one course that did not take in grade 11, or it was a mark that they needed to have for a particular program or an institution requirement, and they were not able to get that mark. So sometimes students do upgrading as well after high school. Some students take the time off maybe a year, two, three years to travel, explore the world and also to volunteer. So tons of opportunities there for you guys after high school. Whatever you end up doing, I want you to know it's really about you. It's about your passion. What do you value? What is of interest to you? If you want to go into post-secondary, really think about um, what programs are of interest to you. If you want to get into accounting, for instance, can you see yourself doing the job an accountant is doing for the rest of your life? Those are the kind of conversations you want to start having um, and just reflect on them. You know, if you wanted to go into post-secondary, how long do you see yourself in post-secondary? The institution that you end up going to, what sort of programs do they offer? How long is it going to take for you to complete the program? So as you think about these things, as you start having conversations, um, it's going to make it more easier for you guys to make an informed decision about your choices. So I just wanted to show you this just to let you know that not everyone's path is going to look the same after high school. I um, mean, you've got all of these different options there for you. Um, all right. So I've got a couple of questions for you guys. And let's do this in the order um, uh, in which it appears on the screen. So the first question I have for you guys is, Will post-secondary be different from high school? It's a simple yes or no um, question. Um, so can you guys post that on chat? If you think post-secondary will be different from high school. Remember, post-secondary are um, colleges, universities, and institutes. So um, all right. I think almost everyone, <laughs> someone goes, yo. Um, all right. Almost everyone thinks post-secondary is going to be different from high school. We've got a student who says no. And someone thinks it depends. Uh, it depends on, you can elaborate on what you think it depends on. Uh, but sure, I mean, post-secondary may be different from high school. Some of you may think there are a lot of similarities. Um, and all of those kind of things. Now, for those of you who have indicated that post-secondary will be different, how do you think it's going to be different? What is going to be different from, um, uh, uh, what, is gonna, uh, what is going to be different in post-secondary? Can you put that in chat as well? Okay, so we've got a couple of answers coming. Some students think it's going to be more challenging, um, self-directed, the classes are going to be harder, class size, <laughs> all nighter. Yeah. All right, so um, so many different um, uh, so many differences coming in, and that's all great, right? I mean, post secondary um, is going to be different from high school, but there are also similarities to um, uh, high school as well. So those are all great. You guys can keep them coming. I'm just going to ask the teachers as well as Irene just to monitor chat, but I do see that everyone really is very respectful in chat and I, I'm, I, I'm very appreciative of that. 
Um, so, all right, um, great uh, discussion there, you guys. Um, so thanks for um, uh, participating in that. So if we have a look at high school right now, and as you guys know, you've got a lot of structure in high school, your time, schedule, program, a lot of these are managed by your school district, your teachers, even your parents. Post-secondary is gonna look quite different from high school. You're gonna have so much more flexibility. You're gonna be treated like adults where you're gonna have to have so much of independence. You've gotta take responsibility. You're gonna have lots of rights. In post-secondary, if you've never really enjoyed a program or a course, you don't need to take them unless it's a part of your program. If you want a flexible schedule, you have the right to build your own schedule. Um, if you've never really liked um, uh, morning classes or evening classes, you need to make sure that you understand all the courses and programs that is offered to you. And when it comes to building your timetable, you can select the times that you want to take courses when they're offered. So if you're an early bird, maybe you want to take all your classes by 10, 11, or even midday and be done by them. If you are thinking of playing sports or doing volunteer work or even working, you can build a schedule that can accommodate for all of those things so that you can have a nice balance. Sometimes grade 12 students think that, you know, post-secondary is all about all-nighters and it's just, you know, a lot of stress and hard work and all of that. But you guys have a right to choose a schedule that you want. You have a right to so many different things, getting your voices heard, a right to quality, just and fair education, um, a right to opportunities as well as support services. If you ever feel that um, you have a schedule that's not working for you and you can't manage that, you got to do something about it in post-secondary, okay? You guys are going to be adults in post-secondary. No one's going to make that assumption that your course load is not manageable. So you can make that, you can make an attempt to balance things for you. You can have a nice school, work, and social life balance. So it's all about you having the conversations, the right conversations with advisors, with your instructors, um, and with support services so that you guys can know um, the opportunities that are there and you guys can know how to address issues when you experience them in post-secondary. So post-secondary is going to come with tons of responsibilities as well, making sure that you're registered for your courses on time. In post-secondary, when you're given a time ticket to register for your courses, you need to make sure that you're in front of your computer or a device registering for your courses at the time that is allocated to you. If you don't take that responsibility, you may miss out on the courses that you need or want to take, right? So um, that's on you if you decide not to register for courses at the time you need to register for courses. You've also got responsibilities to make sure that you carry out your assignments on time and with integrity and honesty and that you submit your assignments on time, you go to classes prepared, all of those kinds of responsibilities. No one's going to call home to remind you to register for your classes, to submit your assignments, to pay for your application or for your tuition fees. Tuition fees, I mean, deadlines, all of these kind of things can be a little brutal in post-secondary. So if you're not organized, you're not on the top of your game, you might miss out on certain things. So what happens if you don't pay for your tuition fees in post-secondary? You may risk getting deregistered. And if you are deregistered for your courses, that's not a good thing. Imagine what a hassle it's going to be if you want to uh, pick up those courses again. So all of these things I want you guys to remember, but I think you know um, quite a bit of these already. So um, uh, colleges, institutes, and universities. So what are these types of institutions? Sometimes students think they know where they want to go. Um, other times students are not so sure. So um, if you look at colleges, these are smaller institutions and they typically offer undergraduate programs, okay? Um, some colleges in our province may offer two-year programs, but they're also uh, four-year programs that are offered by colleges as well. Colleges have smaller class sizes, so sometimes students find moving from high school and transitioning into post-secondary can be quite difficult or challenging, especially if class sizes are huge. So at a college, maybe you're thinking of Langara College, 
Um, at a college, you're, ex uh, you're going to be sitting with about 20 to 35, 40 students max in a class. Colleges also have so many courses and programs that are transferable to other institutions. So if you like the idea of completing high school, going to a local college and then um, and, uh, transferring a little bit later on, um, that is uh, something for you to think about. So not all students like huge crowds. If you really want to focus on building your relationships or strengthening them with other students and instructors, maybe a college is something for you to consider. Um, when it comes to tuition fees, colleges are more affordable. And that is because colleges provide access to education for everyone in their community. Um, institutes really focuses on applied or practical knowledge. Their fields of studies are very specialized. So if you wanted to get into something like marine engineering, maybe technology, aeronautics, or aviation, then a, um, an institute may be something for you to consider. Now, when thinking about costs, remember technical institutes tend to be more expensive than um, colleges because their programs are so specialized. They need all sorts of tools and technologies, equipment to be able to offer those programs. So keep that at the back of your mind. Uh, but having said that, there's so many different ways in you, which you guys can fund your studies in post-secondary. Universities are much larger institutions. They offer undergraduate as well as graduate programs. There is so much diversity in classes and programs at universities because their student numbers are huge. Now, when you think about diversity, you can think about classes. Imagine going to a university where there is a, a huge melting pot of cultures. In BC, we've got a lot of domestic students as well as international students. So it makes the classroom environment very rich and diverse. So if you like those kind of things, you may really want to do some research to see um, which type of institution fits you best. Also think about the class sizes at universities. In a first or second year university class, you will find yourself sitting with three to 500 students in a first or second year university class. So if you don't mind large crowds, you know, sitting with hundreds of students, then a university may be something for you. But if you feel like that's not suited to your learning style, and you think you're going to have so many challenges with that kind of setting, then think about other types of institutions that may suit your needs. Universities have so much more funding opportunities as well. So they've got tons of um, money from the government, but so does the other type of public institutions. But there are other agencies as well as organizations that give funding to universities to carry out research. So once you complete a four-year bachelor program, if you're interested in moving on and doing a master's, then you can do that and you can apply for funding as well. So I wanted to leave all of these things with you guys, something for you to think about. Now, on this slide, we've got all the public post-secondary institutions in BC. Which of these do you guys recognize? You may be able to recognize quite a few of these ones, considering your location. So which ones do you guys recognize? Langara, yeah. <laughs> a bunch, yeah. All right, so some of the ones there, you know, um, not too far from uh, Richmond, you can see you've got Langara, which I think may be the closest um, to Richmond. Um, I, I'm not too sure, but I think um, that may be the closest to you guys. So we've got 25 public post-secondary institutions in our province, okay? All of them are there on the screen for you. Um, of the 25, we've got 11 colleges, 11 universities, and three institutes. Now, when we look at the institutes, you, uh, I think some of you recognize BCIT. Yep, that's the biggest one we've got in our province. BCIT, I believe, has over 300 programs and a couple of, couple of campuses here and there. Um, we've got the Nicola Valley Institute of Technology. They've got a campus up in Merritt. And I think NVIT has one of the cheapest tuition fees um, in the province. And they provide so many community-based type of programs um, uh, for students. And then we've got the Justice Institute of BC. So for those of you, maybe you wanted to become a firefighter, maybe a paramedic, you wanted to get into law enforcement, um, JIBC offers all of those types of programs. So you guys have so many different choices, as you can see on the screen. 
Some of you may like the idea of studying at a smaller college. So maybe you wanted to go to Langara for two years and then maybe UBC for uh, your third and fourth year or SFU for your third and fourth year. So I mean, we've got a great transfer system in our province. If you like the idea of transferring, maybe you really like the idea of studying off at a smaller college, later on you wanted to um, go to a university so you get the, the best of both worlds and it's a really great educational experience to study at different types of institutions. So if you wanted to do that, just remember that we've got a tr great transfer system in our province um, and academic advisors at universities and colleges can help you guys with the transition. Um, all right, so um, we've got a question there about private institutions. Um, I, I'll let Irene um, respond to that while I continue um, with, the, uh, with the presentation. So. Um, Irene, if you could help out with that, that would be awesome. I'm in chat. Um, I'm happy to contribute to that um, if we need. So um, you guys are going to have tons of study options in post-secondary. All of these things you're seeing, these are called credentials. Now, when you finish your high school graduation, you will get your high school diploma. That is an important qualification that you need, not only to get into post-secondary, but some jobs out there may want to see your high school diploma. So that's your first credential that you're working towards right now. In post-secondary, you've got so many different options. For today, we're not going to go through the graduate um, credentials. Um, it's a little bit earlier um, uh, to have a look at all of this right now, but you guys can read about it if you're interested on the Education Center BC website. So one option you've got is the trades. Now trades can be anything from hairstyling to plumbing, the carpentry, cooks, all of those kind of things, hands-on learning. Now in BC, we've got over 100 trades programs, and I think 49 of them are considered red seal trades. So when a student completes all their training for the red seal, um, once they've done their certification, they can work pretty much anywhere across Canada. So that's the neat thing about the um, red seal certification. Trade starts off with a foundation year and then students move on to um, apprenticeship training. So all of get, that can take about four years to complete. So if you are interested in the trades, you can always check out our trades database. Um, I'll show you where you can check that out. And it lists all the trades program provided by institutions as well as many um, training providers out there. Um, so. That's the trades for you. And then you've got a couple of other options here. These are all called undergraduate credentials. Now, some of you may want to go into post-secondary, but you probably don't know which program you wanted to get into. Maybe you wanted to spend a year or two. You feel like going into post-secondary. You're not sure exactly what you want to do. Maybe you don't want to spend too much time in post-secondary, so you're looking for a shorter-term credential. Now, certificates are um, shorter term credentials that can range from six months to a year. And certificates really help you acquire the necessary skills that you need to enter the workforce. So if you don't want to spend too much time in post-secondary, but you are looking to obtain a qualification so that you can start working, consider a certificate program. You can study programs like education assistant, healthcare assistant. You can obtain a paralegal certificate. Um, you can do a business certificate, all of those kinds of programs. So that's an option for you. Sometimes a certificate can um, count towards a diploma program. For instance, if you take a one-year business certificate, you can move on to year two of a, a business diploma program. That's just an example, but each institution has their own requirements for programs. So if you're thinking to letter up, make sure you check the requirements. Diplomas like the certificates can also help you acquire the necessary skills you need to get into the workforce. So diplomas are two-year programs and you can study um, things like, uh, let me think, um, education, uh, early childhood education. Um, you can study a criminal justice diploma, um, uh, dental hygiene, massage therapy, all of those kind of things. So if you don't want to spend too much time in post-secondary, but you do recognize the value of going, these are some credentials that you can get into. Now the associate degree, this is a transfer program in our province and it's a two year program. So if you take two years of an associate program, maybe at Langara College, maybe a two year um, associate of arts, 
you can transfer to year three at SFU, UBC, or other institutions in our province um, and start um, a year three of a bachelor program. So that's just something to keep in mind. The Associates is a more flexible program. Um, it really is there for students who want to build a strong foundation in the arts or the sciences. And then the bachelor program in our province takes four years to complete. It's a combination of theory as well as practical learning. So um, uh, many jobs out there may require um, the minimum of a bachelor degree, especially if you wanted to get into some kind of a professional job. So if you're aiming for a specific type of job or wanted to get into um, a specific career path, it's now is a really good time for you guys, if you haven't already, to start looking at what the requirements are to get into the job. So if you, if you know that you need a bachelor degree, then maybe you want to work towards a bachelor degree. If the minimum requirement is a certificate or a diploma, then you can work towards the credential that is required. Um, so all of those options there for you. Now, some of you may be thinking of going to law school. Maybe you wanted to become a doctor. So for those programs, they are categorized under professional programs, which takes two or three years to complete. Now, professional programs, you cannot enter directly from high school. So if you wanted to study medicine or you wanted to become a lawyer, you cannot graduate high school and go directly into those programs. You gotta take a slightly different route. So first, you gotta finish high school. Second, you gotta take a three or four year bachelor program. And then you've got to apply to law school or to go on and become a doctor. So just remember that for many professional programs, that's the route that you will need to take. So those are all the options that are available for you guys. Um, if you feel that you need more information on that, I can certainly show you where you can read up more about that on our website as well as on the institution's website. So to sum up our PowerPoint presentation, and before we move on to the website, there's tons of opportunities that post-secondary is going to offer uh, for you guys, whether it's you wanting to volunteer, um, play sports, join different kinds of student clubs, work on campus, off campus, um, participate in co-op education, internship, internship opportunities, or even consider going abroad or on exchange programs. These are all the opportunities that you guys are going to have in post-secondary and so much more. So if you haven't had the opportunity to volunteer while you're in high school, you can certainly explore that when you're in post-secondary. And of course, when things get better, um, right now it's a little more challenging to look at volunteer opportunities in person, um, also to travel, whether it's for study abroad or exchange programs. But when things get better and the restrictions are lifted uh, for traveling, that you guys can explore all the many types of um, study abroad programs that is out there. Um, when you guys get involved, I think you already know this, you know that you can get the most out of your education. And volunteering is a really good way to be engaged in post-secondary because when you're applying for a job and you've got that volunteer experience on your resume, it adds a lot of weight. So just remember that. Uh, very quickly, regarding sports, there are many institutions, I think if not all, I have, but don't quote me on that, just do your research so that you can learn more about it. But um, institutions offer scholarships to their student athletes. So if you play competitive sports, um, reach out to the institutions, um, athletics and recreation services or centers to see how you can play sports. And, um, and when you play sports, you can, I, I think automatically you may get um, a fully paid scholarship. And in addition to that, you might be able to get priority registration. Um, so all of those opportunities are there for you guys to explore. And um, what we want to do now for the second part is um, we want to move on to the Education Planner BC website. So um, I'm going to pause there for a little bit and I will check with you guys to see if anyone has any questions, um, including the teachers. Um, for you guys that, uh, let's see, uh, you're in grade 12 now. Um, are there any of you that have applied to um, institutions for fall 2021? 
just trying to figure out if there may be some students who have used the Education Center BC. Um, and did you guys use the Education Center BC application system? Wow, quite a few of you. That's awesome. Someone used it for Langara and SFU. Nice. There's students that applied to BCIT, maybe UBC. Um, if you did, it, you wouldn't have used Education Center BC. Um, all right, so for you guys who have already applied, that's awesome. Um, I'm not going to go through the application in detail because you've already gone through the process. So um, I'm going to ask you guys, do you have any concerns about post-secondary? Concerns? questions, anything like that for those of you that have already applied, even for those students who have not applied. What are some of your concerns? Tuition, that's a really good one, yeah. Someone is saying acceptance, okay. So keep that coming. Um, for those of you that have already applied, if you feel like you've gotten all the information that you need, then maybe you can work on other things. So just continue with the permission of your teachers, of course, or just continue um, on the website. Um, I have shared, I think um, uh, your teachers may have shared a search activity handout with you. That really is for students who have not applied, who are still in the exploring stages. Um, so for those of you that have not applied, but you want to get into post-secondary, you can use that handout at your own time. But what I'm going to do now is I'll take you guys through the Education Center BC website, give you a quick overview, and maybe we can wrap up a little bit earlier because it does seem like the majority of you have already applied. So for those of you who have not applied into post-secondary yet, our website can help you um, access many different advice, information, as well as resources so that you can plan your educational journey. Um, so we've got a plan section right here. Um, and let's see, um, Irene, there is another question coming in uh, from a student about community service. If you wanted to take that one, um, it would be awesome, and I'm happy to elaborate on that if needed. So we've got a plan section here um, with all the information that you need to plan your educational journey. The search section really um, is where you can find the many different databases that has all the programs offered by the 25 public post-secondary institutions, as well as a couple private ones. I think there was a student who had asked earlier about private institutions. So on our website, you can only apply to public post-secondary institutions in our province. The private institutions do not use the application on Education Planner BC but we do list a couple of private institutions um, on the search database. So you can explore their programs, but you cannot submit applications to those institutions. Um, and the application system there, some of you have used it, which is awesome. So I'm not gonna go through all of that in detail. So the plan section, if you guys look through it, there's tons of information to help you get started, for those of you um, who are going into post-secondary, you'll notice we've got a page um, with information on academic advisors. So um, my recommendation or suggestion for you guys is before you start your first term next year in post-secondary, so September 2021 is going to be the first term for those of you that have applied to post-secondary. When you get accepted, just make sure you make that appointment to meet with an advisor. It is so, so important that you do that because academic advisors at post-secondary institutions have a wealth of knowledge about their programs, institutional requirements, transfers, studying abroad, and all of those kind of things. I have an academic advising background and I've worked with thousands of students. Um, and sometimes I see students taking the wrong courses because they weren't sure if it was going to count towards their program. Um, sometimes students struggle academically, they're leg behind and they don't seek help. So all of those kinds of issues um, are things that you may run into. I hope that you don't, but advisors can help you with program planning. They can help you change your programs if you felt like you needed to change, if you feel that your course load is too much and you needed a balance there that can help you with all of those kind of things. 
So this page really gives you some tips on how you can meet with an academic advisor. Um, so don't feel intimidated or anything like that. They really are there to help you. So a great resource there. If you are an international student, we've got a page for international students with some information there. Similarly, a page for indigenous students. So all of these things are there for you to help you get started. Um, we're not gonna go through everything, but just very quickly, the glossary page. If you're not sure what some of the terminologies or lingos are in post-secondary, here you can learn all about that. You've heard me say co-op education. Maybe the majority of you know what that is, but for some of you who may not know what co-op education is, then you can read that, um, read more about that here. So very briefly, um, different lingos and um, uh, what they mean on this page. Um, let's see, credentials. We spoke about credentials a little bit today, but we did not get into masters and PhDs or doctorate degrees. So for those of you that are interested in that, you can learn more about here um, or revisit any of the credentials that we had a look, look at today. Um, if you wanted to learn about apprenticeship and you probably don't have a lot of idea what apprenticeship entails, um, you can read about that on this page and some other information there. Uh, majors and minors, that's an important thing. How do you know which major or specialization or concentration? There's so many different um, terminologies that is used, uh, but it really is the same thing. So you can read about majors on this page. Uh, for those of you that need help with application planning, maybe you're not sure how to put an application together. Maybe you're just still exploring. This page can help you with all of that. Students who have already applied, do you know how and where to get your transcripts from? If you don't, then you can read about that here. And then for those of you that have already applied, what happens after you submit your application? How do you track your application? How do you know what the status is? Who do you contact? All of that, okay? Including some information on registering. Now, when you register for courses in post-secondary, you may not get the courses you want or even the courses that you need, especially at larger institutions where there's so many students. So what happens if you don't get a course that you want or you need to take in a term that you want or need to take that course? You've got some information here on waitlisting. So um, have a look through that so that you can understand what to expect in post-secondary. Alrighty, so the finance section now for those of you that have applied this is equally important for you all right for those of you are still exploring great information here but for those of you that have already applied do you know what all the types of expenses you're going to incur in post-secondary like what are they this can really help you understand all of that and um have you do you have a budget worksheet do you know how much it's going to cost you to go into post-secondary what the cost of living is going to be like all of that you've got tons of resources here for you to explore and access and then how can you guys fund your studies in post-secondary you've got all of that here for you if you're thinking of applying for a student loan make sure you understand and as the name suggests student loans you gotta pay them back so what if you don't want to be in debt after you've finished uh, post-secondary well you've got so many other opportunities here for funding you've got awards scholarships um, uh, grants all of these are based on merits and you don't need to pay them back there is bursaries in post-secondary as well so bursaries are really uh, funds that is there to help students who demonstrate financial need in post-secondary so if you're struggling to pay rent, if you feel like you need more money for food or um, transit, all of those kind of things, you don't want to add that stress onto you in post-secondary. You can always reach out to the financial aid office to see how you can access these funds. So we'll leave that there for you guys to read. Well, it's, it's there. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Um, and then you've got the scholarships and bursaries page. Sometimes students are not sure which scholarships or bursaries to apply for. Sometimes students just don't know um, where to look for scholarships. So we've got tons of scholarships listed here, like private as well as public providers. Um, and every institution, whether you're going to Langara, SFU, UBC, Douglas College, Capilano University, um, uh, 
whichever institution you're going to in the province, all the private ones have a financial aid office. And financial aid officers, they tend to have so much of money for their students. So if you guys haven't applied for scholarships yet, especially for those students who have already submitted an application for fall 2021, make sure you apply. There's tons of entrance scholarships. These are available to students who are just coming out of high school. Um, there is certain eligibility requirements around that. There, there is a specific application period. So I think you guys should read about that if you don't know about it already. Uh, sometimes when you apply for admissions, you can be considered for entrance scholarships without needing to apply separately. Um, I can speak on behalf of the institutions. You guys will need to check that. Some institutions offer um, excellent awards or excellent scholarships to their students based on their grades. Check to see if it's offered at the institution you've applied to so that you can get access to that money. Excuse me, I'm just going to take a short break here. All right, a lot of talking for me. Um, so uh, what was I going to say? In, across Canadian universities and colleges, around $5 million go unclaimed in scholarships each year because students don't apply for scholarships. So someone mentioned when I asked, you know, what was, uh, what is a concern you have? A student said something about tuition. So the reality is that post-secondary is expensive. I studied at three universities in three countries and the total cost of my tuition was over slightly over 200,000 Canadian dollars. There was no way I could pay for that. My family couldn't pay for that. So um, what I did was to apply for scholarships. I applied for five scholarships. I looked through the eligibility requirements. Um, I checked the application deadlines and I submitted scholarships to five. Um, and I received four out of the five. So that was pretty awesome for me because I did not need to pay out of my pocket. There was money out there. Somebody wanted to give them for students who wanted or needed them and wanted to study. So all of those kinds of things is there for you. Um, if you need tips on how to apply for scholarships, we've got some of those there on, um, on this page as well. Um, if you wanted to learn how you can save money in post-secondary, you can read this page. There's so many ways in which you can save money through transit, through open textbooks, and all sorts of student discounts. Um, so you can read more on that on this page. The study page, I'm not going to go through in a lot of detail, but here is where you can read about the different support services in post-secondary and how you can make the most use of them. If your program, maybe you're taking a bachelor program or a diploma program and your program does not offer internships or work placements, you can check with the institution to see if they've got a co-op office. And you can always check with them to see how you can um, uh, work towards some work experience while you start studying. All right, and then the work page really is um, the many different types of tools that you can access um, to assess different careers. Um, the Career Compass website, I'm not sure if, you've got, if you guys have heard of this or used it, but it's a pretty awesome website. You can learn about the jobs or the occupations that will have the highest number of job openings in the coming years. Um, so you can discover all of that, and then you can take many different quizzes to learn which career fits you best. So it's a, it's a pretty awesome website to fiddle around with. Um, when you're in post-secondary, you guys are gonna have access to career services or career centers and alumni services. This is, these guys are there to help you transition from post-secondary into the workforce. So, as you're nearing year three, year four of your studies, be sure to go and have a chat with these guys. Ask them to check your resume. Um, they can help you um, look through your cover letters and all of those kind of things. So, you know, when one chapter of your life is almost ending right now, you're in high school, that's going to end pretty soon. Yeah, and then you're going to go into post-secondary or whatever path you want to take. And once that's going to end or is coming to an end and you're starting to think about you know the next phase of your life so when you're almost done with high school you wanted to get into post-secondary when you're almost done with post-secondary you've got so many different services there to help you move on to the next phase of your life so career centers and alumni services are really really great for you to utilize for those of you maybe you're considering going into a good job or finding a job after high school but you're not sure which job platforms or websites to look at, 
we've got a compilation of different um, uh, job websites or platforms here on the website, so you guys can easily access that. All right, so let's have a look. Um, are we doing good with time? So I'm not going to spend too much time on the search database. Uh, because majority of you have already applied, but for those of you that have not applied, I think it's still um, worth going through this so that you know how to explore programs. But I'm going to give you a quick overview, and then if you need more help, we've got comprehensive tutorials posted on YouTube um, uh, that can help you understand how to explore programs um, on our website as well as to apply for admissions. Um, so I'll leave that with you guys. And uh, if I can just ask my colleague Irene to put the YouTube channel's um, um, URL on chat, that would be awesome. Thank you, Irene. Alrighty, so um, the undergraduate database really is a compilation of all the undergraduate programs that we offer in our province. Um, so these are um, the list of all the public universities, colleges, institutes, as well as a couple of the private ones. I think we've got about eight private ones listed here as well. So searching this database is as easy as typing in a single keyword or applying filters. So if you already know the institution you wanted to go to, maybe Langara College, just click on that. All of their programs are gonna be listed for you in alphabetical order. So if you look through that, something jumps out at you, click on that and you can see a one-stop shop kind of information this state for you. So business administration bachelor degree at Langara College has three intakes for the year. It's offered at the Vancouver campus, takes about four years of full-time studies to complete, approximately how much it's gonna cost you, the credential you're gonna get when you finish, so it's a bachelor program, but it also is transferable to other institutions, okay? And how is the program going to be delivered? Maybe some of you are thinking about how this pandemic is going to impact program delivery at the institutions for next year. If you're thinking about it or if you've thought about it, it's a great, great concern. So institutions, because of the pandemic, have started to offer online courses or a hybrid model. So You'll see here, we've listed temporarily online or hybrid for fall 2020. As we get updates from institutions, we will update the program delivery option as well. So you can always check that out. But for those of you that have already applied, um, once you get accepted, institutions will communicate with you directly about these kind of things. So the application deadline advice, this is such important information for students and sometimes students miss out on putting an application in because they somehow overlooked the deadline. So um, institutions will list their um, application deadlines on this page um, and if you can't see a specific um, a timeline or an application period, you can always check the institution's website directly. And towards the bottom of the page, you'll see an application fee. Each institution charges an application fee, the fees retained by the institution. So regardless of whether you put it in a paper application or apply online, you will still need to pay that application fee. So online applications really is the way to go. It's straightforward and um, you don't need to worry about paper. So um, this is there for you guys. Now, if you're wondering what the admission requirements or the entrance requirements are, they're listed for you on this page. So the admissions info tab you've got there. So for the business administration program at Langara College, you need to have graduated high school and you need an English as well. So institutions will list the courses that you need from grade 11 and grade 12 along with a grade. So if you are required to have a specific grade or a percentage, they're gonna indicate that for you here. So now you're in year 12, you're I think in your second quarter, if I recall correctly. Um, but if you haven't taken a course that you need for a specific program or to meet the institution's um, entrance requirement, then it's a really good idea for you to work towards that. If you're wondering about grades, you are probably thinking, well, it's the quarter system. How is that going to impact um, my application? You know, maybe I won't be taking some courses that are required for admissions until the last quarter. So 
what are institutions doing? So long story short, institutions don't want to disadvantage any students. So in this situation, they're looking at interim grades. There are many institutions that are considering interim grades. Um, they may ask you to um, provide projected grades. So um, if you've already applied and you feel like you don't understand the admission requirements well, you can always connect with them so that you have a better understanding. Um, same goes to you guys who haven't applied yet. So if you haven't applied, but you're thinking about these things, you can always connect with the institution directly um, so that you can understand the admission processes better, especially because it's a, it's a challenging time with this pandemic. Um, some of you may be thinking, well, if I take a business program, what can I do afterwards? What sort of jobs can I get into? So we've got an occupations tab here for you and all of the different careers that are linked to that program you're taking will be displayed here for you. So you can go through all of that and if something jumps out at you, you'll probably be like, okay, what does a purchasing manager do? So you can simply click on that. It's gonna take you to WorkBC's career profiles um, and on that page, you can view their full profile. You can learn more about their job, the expected salary, what the labor market looks like, and all of those kind of things. So, um, so that's there for you. So a lot of information there, hey? Um, we've got that overview that we had a look at. We've got the entrance requirements listed here, as well as the occupation. So you guys have access to all of that information if you wanted to explore further. All right, so we've had a look at the institution's filter. Um, we're not going to go through all of the institutions, but subject areas, so very quickly, these are all the broad subject areas. So you guys are probably thinking, okay, I want to get into business for those of you that haven't applied yet. But business is a really broad category. If you expand on that little plus button there, you'll notice all the different subjects under business. So anything from accounting to economics, finance, human resources, insurance, marketing, and so forth. If something jumps out at you, just click on that subject area and you will automatically see all of the institutions that offers a program in marketing or something related to marketing. So you can always go through that. Everything is listed for you in alphabetical order. So you can go through all the programs offered by the institutions, make comparisons, check out what the entrance requirements are and what their fees are, the length of study, um, and all of those kind of things. So um, that's there for you. Um, and I'm not gonna go through all the subject areas because it is self-explanatory. If you wanted to search by program credential, you've got that option as well. Now, remember we spoke a little bit about upgrading. You've got that high school equivalency filter there as well. So this, once you select that, remember we talked a little bit about not being able to take that course that you were you really needed to take in high school. Maybe you're applying for a tourism program, a four-year tourism program, and for some reason you did not take that grade 11 course that you needed to take in high school. You can always do upgrading in post-secondary. So this is how you check for all the institutions that offer high school equivalent courses. Now, one thing to remember is Upgrading in post-secondary is tuition-free for domestic students. So um, if you are a Canadian citizen or have permanent resident status, um, upgrading in post-secondary will be tuition-free for you. So that's how you check for institutions that offer high school courses. Again, everything is listed for you in alphabetical order. Um, you can simply click on the institution that you're interested in. Um, and it's gonna display for you all the upgrading programs. And once, what you wanna do is really just to click on the program name and that's, that's, that's what we had a look at already, all right? So the shortcut to this is when you're ready to apply, simply click on the Apply Now button. And when you do that, it redirects you to the application um, site. And what you wanna do is to sign up for an Education Planner BC account if you haven't already. Um, and then start the application process. So that's there for you. Um, and very, very quickly, um, let's have a look to see how we're doing with time. I think we're doing really well with time. You've got all of these other filters there for you. I'm not gonna go through everything, but for you guys, um, if you are wondering about um, how COVID is in impacting program delivery, 
we've got this filter there. So under the learning methods option, we've got temporarily online or hybrid. And if you click on that, it's going to show to you, it's going to show for you all the programs that is now online or using an alternate delivery method because of COVID. So all of these four are standard or they're default, they're always there. And we've in, included this here because of the pandemic. All right, so that's, um, I think that's enough for the filters. It's a lot of information. I do understand that. So I'm not going to take you through everything here. You guys can always check out the YouTube tutorials that we've got. And I see my colleague has posted um, uh, the um, URL there, which is awesome. Thanks, Irene. Now, if you need more help on how to explore the search database, we've got a how to search section on, on the help um, page with some screenshots as well as explanations to explore programs. For those of you that have not applied, maybe you want to apply for fall 2021, don't wait for the last minute, okay? There's all sorts of reasons why you may not be able to get a seat. Maybe even if the applications are rolling admissions on a rolling admissions basis, which means institutions have applications open throughout the year, and it's usually the smaller institutions. The larger institutions like UBC, SFU, for instance, these guys close their admissions much, much earlier. They have a couple of months where they open their applications. Um, most open on October the 1st, and they can close anytime from Jan to Feb, March. So pay attention to that. Um, and if you haven't applied yet, then this page can help you through the application process. So step-by-step -step, um, guide to completing your application. So some information on how you can create an account, complete your profile, and then complete your application. So that's there for you guys. Now, if you have any questions about us, you can always connect with us through this web form. Um, whether it's you trying to find a program or using the application and you're having um, uh, challenges or difficulties, we can help you with troubleshooting. Um, and just very quickly, we've got a questions page with a compilation of all our frequently asked questions, especially for students who are trying to use the website and they're having issues uh, maybe with the application, whether it's logging in or your account's giving you issues. We've got some troubleshooting tips here for you. Uh, for those of you that have already applied, this I wanted to point out to you. Maybe you have questions, you know, about, I think two students, when I asked them, um, what concerns you have? Two students said something about acceptance. I'm not too sure what you mean by that, but I think it's trying to figure out whether or not you'll be accepted into the program or even for course registration. So if you're worried about that, maybe because of the quarter system and you're trying to figure out how that's going to impact your application, for a peace of mind, you can always connect with the institution directly. So if you've applied to BCIT, for instance, if you've applied to maybe Capilano University or um, Douglas College, Langara College, whichever institution you've applied to, you can always connect with them directly. So this page has a compilation of all the contact information for admission offices at the 25 public post-secondary institutions we had a look at today. So if you've submitted your application, Maybe you realize you made a mistake in your application. Maybe you're like, oh my goodness, I didn't realize I applied to the wrong program or to the wrong term, or you know, you've decided to withdraw your application or you wanted to follow up on the status of your application. You have questions around registration or transcripts, all of those kind of things. You can always connect with the admissions offices um, at the institution or institutions you've applied to and all of that contact information is here for you. So if you apply to multiple institutions, instead of going to their website and spending time on looking for that contact information, we've compiled them here for you. And that's much, much easier for you to use. So I think that brings me to the end of my presentation. I just wanted to check back in with the teachers um, and also with the students. I know Irene has been monitoring chat, so I really wanted to thank you, Irene, for doing that. Uh, but Christina, if you're there, I'm not sure, was it Tim, I think? Was it, was it Tim, the other teacher? Uh, it, John. John's oh. here. Mr. Lim. Mr. Lim. <laughs> um, so, oh, Mr. Lim, hi. Um, welcome. So uh, do the teachers have any questions for Education Planner BC or um, even the students? Uh, I know students have had that coming through chat, so that's awesome. Um, 
Not really. I just think it was it's a great presentation. Uh, I think it's just a, something that um, was just basically giving information to the students because I think in the end there's so many options. It's really hard and overwhelming to know exactly if I'm doing this right or you know is my application correct? How do I find out? Like we just found out a student. Um, their application um, was not seen. It, it went through, but it never processed. And just saying, make, making sure that you're on top of your applications at all times. And if you're not seeing things progress, to contact the post-secondary institution. Make sure that your application is in. Um, and know that we're here to help them. Uh, we're here at the school, and you're there. Uh, yeah. I really thank you so much for presenting, and I hope that the kids, uh, students, have gotten something out of this as well. I hope so too. No, that was a, an awesome remark. Thank you for that. Um, I think one of the students asked about the scavenger hunt um, uh, activity that we had planned. So um, Isaac, thank you for that. Um, when we initially um, sent out the email to the school and was organizing all of this uh, presentations and putting them to, together, our understanding was that we were all going to be, well, you guys were all going to be in a class sitting um, at a computer lab or in front of laptops. So the, the activity was really designed for that um, kind of setup. When we have this kind of setup, unfortunately, it gets a little more challenging to do the scavenger hunt. So Absolutely. I'll leave that with your teachers. And uh, maybe if you guys do get back in class, I'm not sure what your setup is for the rest of the quarter. Um, the teachers can take you through all of that. Um, so um, if you guys have the time to do that with the students, I think. Um, it will be very worthwhile, especially for those that have not applied yet. Awesome. Jul uh, Julian, uh, she has a question here. What are the best schools to consider for pre-medicine? Hmm. Yeah, that's that's a really um, a great question, Julian. Thank you for that. So um, uh, best schools are not so best. I mean, those are subjective words. <laughs> I mean, uh, Irene and I are really not in a position to... Um, comment on which schools may be the best or least or anything like that. So I think the best way to look at um, that question is to do your research to see um, if you wanted to go into medicine at a particular institution, check to see what the admission requirements are for medicine. Um, and then you can uh, maybe narrow down your search. Have, have a think about all the institutions that offer um, the pre-med program or the courses that are required. Um, take into account the environment, the, the location of the institution, um, the variety of courses that they offer, tuition fees, and all of those kind of things. So I, mean, I think at the end of the day, it really depends on you and your needs. Um, so while I can single out an institution and say, you know, maybe go to Langara and then go off to med school, I, I really am not in a position to do that. But going into pre-med, pre-med is after a four-year degree, so you still have to no. do, isn't it? No, no that's part, part of um, your so, can, Yeah. So you can go into pre-med in many ways. You can go through kinesiology, you can go through science, you can go through, yeah, there's yeah, many so, ways of getting to pre-med. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying, like really weigh your options, right? Because there's so many institutions that provide that. So there's so many institutions that provide prerequisite programs. So you really got to see, like weigh your options to see um, which institutions offer and can cater for your needs. Because sometimes a student may want to take those courses at a smaller institution or at the same institution that they wanted to go to. So um, it really depends on the student's need. That's great. Great answer. Yeah, thank you. All right. So it doesn't seem like we've got any other questions coming in. Um, so yeah, well, thank you so much for having us. And if the students have any more questions or would like to follow up, then you are very welcome to connect with us and we'll see how we can help you out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming to Burnett. And thanks to all the students for coming out and watching. All right, yeah, thank, thank you. you. You guys have been awesome. Thank you. Take care, Bye. everyone. Bye, everybody.